Here's everything that you need to know to get started with Bricks Builder in just 10 minutes. Bricks Builder is a fully featured page building experience that you can install as a theme on your website. Talking about full featured tools, let's talk about the sponsor of this video. WP Codebox is a code snippets plugin that allows you to manage your code snippets. Code snippets are little pieces of code that you can use to alter things that are happening on your website directly. If it is within Elementor, WooCommerce, Bricks or WordPress itself. To give an example, WP Codebox ha already has some things available. For instance, our most favorite feature is to disable good work and only using the classic editor. It's a really simple code snippet but it gets you a long way. If you want to get started with disabling Gutenberg editor and using the classic editor, there will be a link in the description down below. WP Cobox, thank you for sponsoring this video and making this possible. Now let's dive into Bricks Builder. So this is Bricks Builder, a visual site builder that grows with you. It's quite similar to Elementor if you have worked with it before, but it has a lot of more options. Especially if you're used to writing CSS, you already understand what's going to happen on certain kind of pages. Now, if we take a look at pricing, we see that you have to pay 79 US dollars for just one website or 599 pay once and you can use it forever on as many websites as you want. I think this is a real bargain at the moment and quite possibly it can go up. So today's the best day to buy it. If you're not sure if you want to buy it, you can try Bricks for free. Just press this button Fill in your email address and then you can create an account. Tap on objects that become larger with time. And puppies, because chairs won't grow, right? I mean, ooh, I feel pressured to answer this. Verify. And it will create an account sending to your email address that you just have filled in. When you open that, that link, you have to create a new password and you will get greeted with this page. This is the default landing page for Bricks Builder itself. It also disables some kinds of feature in the settings, but we won't go over them right now because we want to get started with building a website as quickly as possible. So what we do is go to page or we'll add a new page. And then we'll just add it with Bricks. This is the Bricks Builder and allows you to easily add things that are available on the left side. These are called elements. And for each element that you click, it will be added to your page. When we select a container, we can see that there are all kinds of settings available. It can be overwhelming when you start out with this, but believe me, it is very simple to understand. Let's add other things as well. I want a heading. We can also press hold and drag it in. And perhaps we want a button. I can't find a button right now, so let's type it in right here. And we see that there's our button. And we throw it in there. Now we have our first section, but it doesn't look the best, right? So I want to change this button. And one way of doing it is by doing it in here. We go to in styling and then we can change, for instance, our background color to the default colors that are available right now. What will happen if we add another section? Let's do that right now. So we'll add another section within the section we'll also add a heading text and button. So we'll add a text heading text and a button. Look at that. Oh, button is still yellow. I want to make the default button a different color, not an orange color. So what we can do to easily manage that in one place, we go to manage, we go to theme styles and here we have a theme style that we can set because we don't have any, we can create new ones. For instance, the default theme style. Now here we can set conditions. Where is this style visible? I want it to be visible on the entire site because it's our default. Then we have a style sheet where we can enter in our custom CSS. But I just want to change the buttons. So we go to elements and in here we need to search for a button. Look at that. There it is. We open it up and we can change the background color for all of our buttons. I want them all to be orange by default. And we also want to change the color for the primary button because that's the one that selects us by default as well. So if we select that one, we can see that now both of our buttons are orange and that's exactly what we wanted. Now, I don't like the that this one is a little bit squared off. So what we can do is change our border. We see that there is a border and we want to add a radius, which means that it will curve the edges. 
for instance, to RAM. Now, if you're used to working with CSS, you know that RAM is a unit of measures, just like pixels. Only it is calculated differently <laughs> because it is reliant on the font size that you have set. And it's actually the base font size. So in here, I think 0.5 it does look great and we're done. We can see that there are certain colors that are already selected here and I don't like that. So what we can do is press this little icon besides the clear button to edit the list. Now I don't know what's happening here. It feels like a little bug, but we can change the colors right here. If we want to change it, you need to press edit and then we can change the color and look at that. The color that we changed right here is reflected on our canvas as well. Let's make it a little bit darker orange like this. Hit save and then we're done. Now, what we also can do to make it very obvious to us what kind of color this is, we can call it orange. So we can edit again and call it orange. Hit save and now the name scheme is as expected. Next up, maybe I want to have a little bit distance between everything. So what we can do is select our container and then we will be thrown out of the settings. So first thing we want to do is check that this display is set to flex, which means that it has flex options. And then here in here, I want to look for a gap. But as you can see, it's a long list of all kinds of things. And if you do know what you're doing and do understand how this all works, we can just go into our search settings and type in gap. And we can change the gaps. We can change to ROM, one RAM for the columns and one RAM for the row. Now we can fill in the information and typing it in one by one. And sometimes you need a little bit more spacing to the top of the button. For instance, using our padding right here. And it should be two RAM. Look at that. That looks a little bit better, right? But it isn't done on the previous section. So let's change that as well to the previous section. Now, this feels very tedious, right? Because if we add another section, duplicate, and we want it to look differently, for instance, we want our button to be first, or we want the image to be first, we can just copy and paste it. But now I don't like the spacing that we're using right here. Uh, I think adding one RAM is better, but now we need to change it on the other sections as well. So let's do that as well. Two, three, two, two, three RAM, two, two, three RAM. Hmm. This gets very tedious, right? I don't like this. I think, uh, hmm, if we look at this, it looks better, but yeah, maybe still more spacing is needed. If there was just a way to do this quicker, well, there is. It's by using classes. And the way I like to use it is adding a class name that we can use for this specific case, right? Let's undo everything. So we can go in here and click on the X on the yellow dot to remove any styling that we have added. So remove the padding here and also remove the padding here. Now let's select our section. And what we want to do is press in here. Then we can add a class. We call it a class of section. And inside the class of section, we can change what needs to be in there. So we can say, I wanted this to be three RAM, right? That's where we started last time. But now I want the same settings to be on this section. And what we can do is open up our section classes again. And as we can see, we have our classes in there. And if we select it, we can see that every section has the same spacing right now. What's that? What's happening? So if we press four, it will increase the spacing to all of us. Let's exaggerate a little bit to see exactly what's happening. And as you can see, they're all spaced evenly. Although I just, just said it one times. Well, that's the advantage of using something like classes. You change it one place and it will be changed everywhere. And the same goes for any padding. We can say that this should be two RAM from left to right. And then we can add two RAM in here as well. So now everywhere, the padding from left to right will be two RAM. Now that you have some kind of idea how to do the styling, let's add another page. We go to pages. We see that we have the bricks page and we have the sample page. But well, perhaps we want to add another page. We wanted to add a context page. There's none. So we can hit save to create it. And once it's created, we can 
save this section by clicking save as draft and then select contact and we'll be visiting our contact page so we can add a section this is our contact page we place it outside i don't like that i usually like to use the structured tools put it in the a certain spot as we can see it looks very tight so what we need to do is add a section class again and now it is the spacing that we wanted inside of our heading we can change this to contact by double pressing and now it is called contact on every section i wanted to have a little bit of darker color to stand out so what we can do is go to background pick a color and pick this grayish color and if we hit save go to pages again go inside bricks we see that these also have gray backgrounds because of the section class that we've created and will be reused everywhere this makes life very easy now these are the basics of bricks builder and i want to encourage you to try and find out how to create sections look at one of the favorite websites and if you would like some help then i really recommend to going into facebook and using the bricks community there are over 23,000 people in there, almost 24,000 people. And I'm also active in there as well. You can tag me by pressing the add symbol in your message and then Lex. And then you can tag me and give in your question there as well. I will try to answer them as fast as possible, but there are also other people that can help you out. Now, other things that you really want need to know is that the plugin that I really love to use, one of them is Alphonse Themer. It allows to create layouts really fast and it adds a lot of things that you didn't know that you could use like this. And then we also have Bricksforge for creating animation. It is a very easy way of doing so, but it also has other features like a forms and it allows you to connect with API, having other dynamic tags, a node editor, which is very awesome to use to create all kinds of interactions. I hope this helped you out. And if you want to see how you how you can learn a little bit about HTML, then watch this video next. And as always, keep designing.